We're back in the comic room. Finally got it cleaned up. Thought I'd show a uh, quick video on the room. And this will be the last time I show a video uh, for the rest of the year uh, on the comic room. Uh, I got a, a hats off to Metarog. He kind of inspired me to finish up part two. And so we're going to do that right now. Those of you that know that I'm a big fan of the 1971 Third Eye Incorporated Marvel Black Light Posters, Postcards, and Puzzles. This display case was from a friend of mine. I moved some of his collection out some years ago. He had some Star Wars toys uh, that he wanted to move. And for my efforts, uh, he gave me this 1905 candy display case that was his wife's great-grandmother's. And uh, there's even a plaque on there. It's not a plaque, but it's a little signifier saying what year it was manufactured. So I keep my lunch boxes in there. Quick story on the uh, Marvel's Greatest Comics. And I told a few people on this. Back in 1989, a dealer in Raleigh, North Carolina, had a box of 100 of these. He wanted 25 cents a piece. I couldn't pass it up. So they're a little novelty display thing that I'll put out ever so often for people to look at me. And yeah, I've given them away. I've, I've probably got about 60 of them left. Another comic rack. Had a fun time cleaning and scrubbing. Um, a little sarcasm there, by the way. But it's always good to go through everything and uh, to make sure everything hasn't deteriorated too much. Cougar Comics has a new video out. It's a... Uh, a uh, Pulling stuff out of the slab, and he's got a beautiful copy of this, Amazing Spider-Man number 19, and that's my favorite cover. So I think I'm, I'm just going to display that for a while, but he's got a great video. I need to check that out. Uh, Menorog has a great video out on his room tour. It's a phenomenal room tour that he's put a lot of work into. Also, I've seen videos lately with... Uh, uh, Dr. Silver Age and uh, Shannon, and they talk about the history of their collection or how, history of how they started collecting. And I love stuff like that. I love finding out how people got started. Not so much the investors, but the collectors who collect out of love, joy, wonder. I think that's one of those things that I, I still have my imagination and my wonder because of my comic book collection, and I just love it so much. Quick story. This book right here, um, of course, the uh, second collaboration between Marvel and DC, the first one was The Wizard of Oz. I purchased this from Marvel Comics mail order, and I could have gotten it signed for an extra four dollars was it and i was like no i'm not doing that i wish i had but it's in nice great condition have the original envelope with it too as well so we put the treasuries back up here they were down for a few years love the marble treasuries love them love them love them matchbox we've talked about them oh i've got the light working too had worked for a while now it's not going to come on oh there it is okay good and this whole thing spins around as well. Uh, got that. That was free. This cabinet was free. Uh, it was outside of a jewelry store and they were throwing it out. This is back around 86, 87 when I started picking up display cases. And I was like, can I take that off your hand? And that was the first, one of the early warning signs for my wife. She was like, what are you going to do with it? I was like, um, I'll think of something. This was from a Salvation Army. They were getting rid of it. And I had some listeners call me back in the late 80s, and they were like, hey, they got this big uh, magazine display, and I was, I was there. Got it. Um, it's amazing the strength I had 35 years ago to <laughs> physically, by myself, put things and shove things in trucks and, and hatchbacks and stuff like that. These display cases were from something called Rachel's Jeweler, Jewelers, which is no longer in existence. Uh, they, these are these huge display cases. Um, I've never gotten the light system to work on them, but it doesn't really matter. But they have an underneath here 
and then of course the glass cases themselves. Um, they wanted $15 a piece and they looked really guilty like, I'm sorry, we're embarrassed to be asking that kind of money. And again, I manhandled this stuff by myself and I don't know how I did it. But you know what? You've been in that situation before where there's something too good to be true and you're like, I'm going to figure this out. So that's where they come from. Uh, this over here, this display case uh, that houses most of my Marvel Mania stuff. And I put a lot of stuff away, too, by the way. My uh, Mary Marvel Marching Society 60s stuff has all been boxed and put away. And I put away a lot of things. But anyway, this display case came from an old general store from the 1920s and 30s. And the uh, older gentleman that sold this to me for 40 bucks when we first bought this house like 31 years ago... Uh, he warned me how heavy it was, and I ended up getting help for this thing, because this, this thing is just like solid oak, and it, it weighs a ton. But I've had it forever. This is one of the earliest display cases I've had, so I love that. So that's it. That's the room. I didn't want to make it too long. Thanks for watching. I've got a uh, video coming up where I'm going to be talking about uh, my love of Conan the Barbarian uh, and what happened to issue number four. The heartbreak of a 10-year-old watching it disappear. Well, that story. Plus, I'm going to be pulling out my Marvel Greatest Comics collection, which I love the reprints from the 60s and 70s, and there's some really cool original covers in that, and there's some good stories about the two, why, when, and where. That's coming up on future episodes of After Comics. Have a great, um, it is January the 8th today. Have a great January. I'll see you soon.